set to be free. in the sun. <laughs> What's an incredible place this is, breathing on the sea. Incredible, I'm gobsmacked, awestruck. It's almost like Jurassic World. Uh, I haven't seen Jeff Goldblum yet. Or Sam Neill. Or oh, Dickie Allen, brother. Look at that. The late Rod Hall's favourite creature, the emu. He likes green jelly. Michael Parkinson, remember these? We're at we're in Jurassic Park. <laughs> Literally. So many dinosaurs. So many flesh eaters. Snappy, yeah. got no food, got no food, yeah. Pink Beak. Yeah, yeah sorry, yeah. mate. Little yeah. no foodie. Yeah. It's lovely here, though. Yeah. Thank you. 
but more importantly, a big bear left for penguin uh, can get to nearly four foot tall and weigh up to 50 kilos. So they are a massive animal. And the reason why emperor penguins get so large is purely because they're the only birds alive today that think it's a good idea to lay their egg during the Antarctic winter. And uh, that's the coldest place on earth at the coldest time of year. Yeah. So if you're not a big, bulky penguin, you're not going to survive the Antarctic free cold weather. So that's why emperor penguins get so big. And that's also why you'll never see an emperor penguin in a European zoo. They need it remarkably cold. Today would kill them in no time at all in the heat. Uh, they need to be kept really cold. So the kings are okay. They're smaller. They live in a warmer climate. We've had ice out today. We've had the shower on today. They cope really well. But if Edinburgh Zoo couldn't keep emperor penguins in the middle of the Scottish winter, as they tried a few years ago, uh, then no zoo in Europe is going to have emperor penguins. So you won't see them about today. But what we've got here then um, is two different sorts of penguins. So our smaller birds are called African penguins, and so they're new. They've been with us for about three weeks in the enclosure. And in the wild, obviously, they're found around the coast of southern Africa, so South Africa and Namibia mainly. And they're also called in the wild the black-footed penguin or the jackass penguin, which um, doesn't mean they're doing crazy stunts on MTV. It just means that they uh, they prey like a donkey. And, uh, and, uh, and unfortunately, uh, unfortunately, they are one of the rarest penguins in the world today. They're in massive trouble. They're now critically endangered, uh, which is one of the worst levels you can be as a wild animal. And unfortunately, um, that's mostly our fault. There's been a couple of oil streams out there recently which have killed a load of moth, uh, pollution, climate change, overfishing, and nest sites being destroyed, and, and penguins being caught in fishing nets. Um, it's meant they're in massive, massive trouble. So we brought these guys in with a view of joining the European Breeding Programme. Uh, which is essentially a backup. Uh, there's enough African penguins and zoos around Europe and the world that if anything goes massively wrong in the wild in the next few years, there are enough in zoos that we can from them as a type of penguin. And then our um, second group of penguins here today are the king penguins. Uh, uh, the king penguins are found mostly around the Falklands and South Georgia in the wild. But you will see them on the northern coast of the Antarctic. They're breeding just off the southern tip of Chile quite regularly now as well. And they're the other way around too, the Africans. In the past, they're doing very well in the wild. Uh, they're rated as least concern, uh, which is the best you can be as a wild animal. And there's at least three and a half million king penguins out in the wild right now. Uh, but from a zoo point of view, they are incredibly rare. And uh, the seven that we've got here today are it for England, Wales, or Ireland. And including us, uh, there's now only 17 zoos across the whole of Europe uh, keeping less than 330 king penguins. So although they're not rare, again, they're part of a big breeding program here. Uh, which is that the 17 of us with king penguins, we don't breed them. Uh, in 40 years' time, none of them have king penguins. And these guys are our star attraction. When, uh, when Spike, just down by Michelle, has got 20,000 friends on social media, you know they're really, really popular. So we want both types of penguin breeding. And the Africans have bred in their previous zoo. Uh, that one in the middle with the dark head is a teenager. Uh, the youngsters don't have that on for a couple of years, so you can see he's wearing his hoodie at the moment. Uh, so they should be breeding for us in the next couple of years. And in the wild, uh, they nest in a cave or a burrow, just see their eggs out in the warm South American sun. Um, here, we've got nest boxes sitting on the huts at the far end. We're going to put more nest boxes down here in the next few months as well. And in there, every pair will lay two eggs. Uh, both parents incubate. So if mum's got the eggs, uh, dad's out in sea and vice versa. And it's about 38 days of incubation. And uh, the chicks are tiny when they hatch up. They're normally about 100 grams and roughly about that sort of size. Okay? Completely helpless, so they stay in the nest for a good couple of months. Uh, mum and dad keep them warm, they protect them, they regurgitate food for them. And if there's lots of food, both chicks will be reared. Uh, more often than not, there's only one chick surviving through the flesh. Uh, they leave the nest at about 12 weeks of age. They start swimming almost immediately, and they're normally feeding themselves by the time they're about 18 weeks old. Uh, but it's, it's a good couple of years before they get their adult feathers, and then they'll start trying to breed. So hopefully, we've got more Africans coming in at the end of the year. Um, we should get them breeding in the future. And then any youngsters go off around Europe as part of the breeding program. Um, our king penguins, though, these guys have bred well for us in the years, over the years. All but one of the kings are birdland born and bred. 
Uh, but they do things completely differently again. And uh, we know we're coming up to breeding season right now uh, because they've been molting recently. And you can see Seth is the last of the group to molt right now. You can see he's looking fat and scruffy. Please don't go and write on TripAdvisor. We've got overweight penguins in bad condition, as someone did yesterday. This is completely natural. He's in the process of growing his new feathers ready to get a girlfriend. Um, now, all birds molt, uh, but your blackbird, your blue tits at home, they lose a feather and replace it later on. Uh, penguins grow all their new feathers first and push the old ones out en masse. That means they haven't got a bold patch and they're not killing to death out in the wild instead. But whilst they're molting, they don't bother waterproofing their feathers. And if they're not waterproof, they can't swim and therefore they can't eat. So he's been packing away up to 25 to 30 of these a day for the last couple of weeks. Uh, and now he's going to starve himself while his new feathers grow through. And he is the last one. Everyone else is more or less done. Uh, Bob's got a few on the back of his neck there, and so is Lillian. Spike's got a few round his backside to come off. But once they've got their new feathers, they then start paying up. They've got the four penguins with Michelle right now. They are flirting, they've been flirting for the last couple of days. And uh, pink penguins are one of the few types of penguins that don't pair for life, so it is a different partner every year. And obviously, here it's a small group, so we find the same pairs quite frequently. Uh, but there's a lot of flirting involved if you're a king penguin. So the first stage of trying to attract a partner is to sing. Uh, so if you hear that low rumbling call, we're saying it's happy Christmas or happy birthday today, but uh, what they're actually doing is saying, here I am, I'm free and I'm single, who wants to come and pair up with me? And if somebody's interested, they will walk over and shout back. And by calling to each other regularly, they can learn to recognise their call, which is very, very important, which is out in the Falklands, they don't live in groups of seven, like we've got here today. Uh, some of the bigger groups might be 40,000 birds strong. So if you've been fishing for, for three or four days and you come ashore trying to find your mate, you don't want to walk around a colony that's two miles long and three miles wide trying to find one particular penguin. Uh, shouting where are you is a much quicker way of finding each other. So that's a lot of the courtship just there. As they get more serious, uh, they like to do a lot of posing. They've got that yellow on their throat. That's a sign that they're old enough to breed. They'll really puff the chest out and throw the head back and show off that yellow. Uh, they also like to get a potential mate to look and see how big their feet are. Uh, that's where the egg will go. So if you've got big feet, that's a really good incubator. You'll see them bound down at their own feet, clicking their beak. And then if you're really lucky, you might well see our penguins vomiting in front of a potential mate as well, which sounds horrendous, but they're not being poorly. But by being sick in front of a potential mate, you're basically saying, look, I can bring back takeaway for any chicks that we're going to have down the line. And so puking penguins is completely natural. So um, say, don't try it on a night out, because it never worked for me when I was younger. Um, but you'll see the penguins vomiting to try and impress the opposite sex. And then hopefully, um, any time in the next few weeks, really, it could well be eggs. We've got the incubators on just in case. Um, every pair will just lay a single egg. Uh, because the egg is very big, uh, the, the, uh, the eggs are usually a little bit bigger than that, but uh, they've got that rounded tip at the end that can nestle right under the belly to keep nice and warm. And they've only got some space to put on their feet for one egg, so it is just one egg per pair. Both parents incubate, uh, so again, if dad's on the egg, mum's out to see. Uh, it takes about 56 days to hatch the eggs out, and the chicks are tiny. Uh, uh, they're usually about 200 grams and about that sort of size when they break up the egg. Uh, they're not cute and fluffy like that though, so anyone saying uh, you'd really be saying that because they are very ugly. They're one of the ugliest baby birds you'll see. Uh, they hatch out completely bold. Uh, all other penguin chicks have some sort of feather. These guys look like ET. They've got brown wrinkly skin, big pot belly, long neck and big eyes on top of the head. And they grow really quickly. Uh, Mum and Dad are good at taking food every few hours. Um, within about three weeks, the chick's off the parent's feet, and it's got uh, brown downy feathers to keep it nice and warm. Yeah. And by the time the chick is six months of age, it's normally heavier than mum and dad. Uh, but they have to bulk up early on, uh, because just as they get to full size, uh, the Antarctic winter comes around, and the chick has still got its baby feathers, so it can't swim and feed itself. But mum and dad don't like the cold weather. So they, they might not feed the chick for two or three weeks at a time. And the chick loses a lot of that weight over the winter period. So uh, when spring comes back around, it has to be fattened back up. So in a really hard week in the wild, it might be 18 months to rear one chick, which is longer than any other bird around today. And that's why there are so few in twos, uh, because they are so slow to breed. And uh, for us here as keepers, 
If we're getting the Penguins freely, we've got to be able to identify them all. Um, for another reason. If any, we've got um, the one female King Penguin just with me. Uh, she's got her son and her grandson in here. Well, don't bother breeding with those two. Um, she is carrying up the grandson right now, which is not great. So if they lay an egg, it gets destroyed because we can't let them breed. Um, if anyone's poorly, we've got to treat the right bird. So all the Africans are on the course of antibiotics at the moment. And Bob the King Penguin up at the top, he's had his painkillers this morning for his arthritis and his anti inflammatory demand. So I need to make sure the right birds get the right treatment. And all of our King Penguins have got names and that they're all adopted. And people like to know which one is which. And in an ideal world, uh, to recognise the penguins quickly, they should all be wearing coloured wing tags. And the idea there is that no two birds have the same colour tag on the same wing. Now, we've taken all the king's tags off recently while they're molting. But none of them are tagged at the moment. Uh, the African penguins have all turned up with tags on. Uh, the only problem there, they're all either black, white or yellow, so you can't recognise them from the distance. So we'll be re-tagging all the penguins very, very shortly. Don't go to my face. Uh, so, as I say, uh, if you really can't recognise the bird, every penguin in here is microchipped, so just like you can do with your dogs and your cats at home. We can come in, run, run the scanner down the penguin, uh, run the scanner down the that picks up the microchip, which is unique to that penguin, and that tells me exactly who I've got. It's foolproof, except the penguins recognise the scanner. If it came out of my pocket now, they'd all be in there within 10 seconds, and I'd still be there tomorrow trying to catch them. So, thankfully, with the kings, you can recognise them pretty quickly. The Africans, they're still quite shy. We're getting used to them. Uh, but a couple of the standout Africans, we've got uh, the one sat along the wall just down there. Uh, he broke his beak as a youngster, so he's actually got his lower beak is a lot longer than his upper beak, which just might mean he bites even harder than normal. Uh, but let's say he, he's the, uh, the grumpy one of the group. Uh, and then the rest of them, they all have different markings of black spots on the tummy. So if we play join the dots out quick enough, we'll be able to work out who we've got. They've just got to settle down and help us recognise them. Uh, but the king penguin, so we've always hand-fed the king, so we've always got up close and personal with them. So they are not easy to recognise. Uh, so the first of our king penguins is Bob, up at the top there. Now, 29 years of age, he's the second oldest male in Europe right now. And he has been our critic for quite some time, particularly in his hips. So he does stand very upright to compensate. As a penguin, if your shoulders are back, you're not very hanging out in front. So he looks like he's the chubby one. He is the lightest of the group. And he's got those last few feathers come off the back of his head and he quite, can't quite bend as well as everyone else with his arthritis. So they will come off eventually. He's just got a little sort of, uh, sort of ring of feathers on the back of his head right now. Uh, we then have Phil just down here. Uh, Phil has got the shortest beak out of all of our penguins today. And she's got the shortest beak out of all... Uh, she's uh, got the shortest beak. And as I say, Phil is a girl, despite having the name of Phil. Uh, she's Pacing, he's gone, he's having off. Having off, it's the heat. That one is, yeah, there we go. Whoa. Thank <laughs> you. 